Encyclopedia Britannica defines Freud as the most influential intellectual of his age. So also influential. Freud not only changed the perspective uh, for analyzing humans, but also he directly influenced them. He changed our understanding of intimacy. He forced us to accept that every human being has a sexual instinct, even infants. One of the main consequences of this was, of course, that the sexuality of women was finally recognized. And later on, much later than Freud, also homosexuality came to be accepted in uh, 1973. <clears throat> Throughout the 20th century, both the amount of sexuality and the type of sexuality considered normal kept increasing. <clears throat> this change took place, of course, first of all, in the intimate life, but it was constantly reflected also in literature, in cinema, uh, and so on. <clears throat> so practically everybody spoke of it, many in approval, others in uh, condemnation. A more than positive myth which has guided the West since the 19th century implies that material freedoms and progress expand, keep expanding. Despite two world wars and the destructiveness of the 20th century, this unconscious, more or less unconscious narrative has survived. And of course, it keeps including also sexuality. But actually, this is not the case. Because of these mm, not so conscious assumptions, we kept implying this. But in reality, the hypothetical expansion curve of sexuality towards the end of last century flattened out. And even fewer people know that uh, the 21st century has brought a, quotes, incredible novelty. That is, that sexuality has entered a sharp decrease nowadays. This is an acknowledged fact, which has been studied statistically, scientifically. The recession of sex is uh, studied as a phenomenon that impacts our well-being, both real or perceived. And many public institutions study it. Uh, it has actually started in Britain already in the last century. It can be verified on uh, uh, many websites. The British one is called Natsar. <clears throat> but as I said, few people are aware of it, and even psychotherapists very often ignore it. <clears throat> Here we see a possible curve, past century increase, then flattening it out, and now probably a recession. Somehow, out of superstition, citizens rarely consult health institution information, the website. It's a universal impulse to hide unpleasant events, even from oneself. Also, this actually was studied by Freud, who called it denial. Now, let's go back to the positive narrative. The optimistic Western convictions assume that freedom, progress, and material acquisitions are always desirable and reflect the vibe of unquestioned growth. 
then how come that instead, nowadays, we are faced with this decline of desire, which we had assumed was the, the representative of joy, of mutuality, of satisfaction. We are in an age, let's be realistic, where thanks to digital amplification, the presence of pornography is nearly uncontrollable in the net. <clears throat> Thus, what happens is that before encountering sexuality in reality with the real body, not the majority, but almost the totality of the new generation have already encountered it in two dimensions in the images of the net. <clears throat> in those images, what is impossible in reality becomes always possible. In man, a performance of 24 hours. In women, a total submission, which is actually worrisome as an example. <clears throat> For the minds of many teenagers, these unreal, these fake examples become some sort of standard reference. They are the first images of errors of sexuality. Thus, they very often feel inadequate and postpone the beginning of sexual life to later time, hoping in the meanwhile to become what's adequate or different. Of course, nowadays, uh, uh, homosexuality is more accepted, so many say, I don't know yet if I am heterosexual or homosexual, things like this. <clears throat> what, though unfortunately problematic, almost traumatized new generation, lose sight of is the fact that the difficulty of a beginner <clears throat> is normal. It is true. Where true means intimate, sometimes shy, anyhow personal, unique. Born instead is twice false, doubly false. First because it is acted, it is not personal, and also because it features psychologically and sometimes even anatomically impossible relationships. What happens is that the relationship of the teenagers with the body has become more problematic than in previous generations. And the amount of uh, young people who torment themselves with diets, hence the anorexia, particularly with girls, has kept increasing. Or the amount of uh, young people who cut themselves, arms, legs, other kinds of uh, self uh, abasement. Some official American uh, institution, for instance, the Center for Disease Control, um, tell us with satisfaction that underage, unintended, unintentional uh, underage pregnancies have finally decreased. However, what the statistics do not say is that this positive development in part occurs for more problematic reasons. Nowadays, families allow their teenager children a freedom which includes mostly sexual freedom, but those teenagers very often prefer to stay home than meet other teenagers and satisfy themselves with the autoeroticism watching pornography like 
happened. It happened long, long ago. <clears throat> so the narrative of the 20th century implied that, like economics, like technology, also sexuality corresponded to a diagram rising to infinity. This suggested that whatever the social paradigm shift was, free sexuality went infinitely beyond instinct and could continue to renew, grow, just as culture does. Infinite resilience of desire was expected. But is it really so with the main human activities? Let us look, for example, at something we know, the IQ, intelligent quotient. In the second half, again, of the 20th century, it was noted that the IQ kept increasing with better instruction. But before the end of the century, it had already started decreasing. And uh, what was called the Flynn effect, the increase, became the negative Flynn effect the decrease of the average intelligence quotient. Here you have in a population, in a national population in the 20th century. So, like the expansion of most human activity on the planet, all growth has a limit. We know that pollution, overproduction, uh, depletion of resources, for instance, lead to negative growth in material. Um, productions. Many environmental studies confirmed. And we can call those external limits. What we are interested in here is um, that there can be something corresponded inside us. It is not unfounded to speculate that every human instinct has limits and also sexuality. We know, for instance, that the instinct to feed if we, the appetite, if we overindulge in appetite, turns gradually into its opposite, the nausea. So we meet also internal limits, variable, but within each person. The erotic attraction is largely an inner psychological fact. But with the excessive use of screens, this inner world tends to disappear. And so, with it, does empathy. In the 20th century, uh, the psychoanalysts would tell their patients, usually, please remember your dreams. And the patient would keep a notebook on the nightstand, and upon waking up, he or she would uh, take notes or even draw the dream. Nowadays, the same patient on the nightstand has a smartphone. So when the patient wakes up and picks up the smartphone, he starts, he, she starts confusing the inner images of the dream with the images already existing or arriving almost each second onto the smartphone. The relationship with the inner world gets more difficult and we are cut off from it for external uh, pressure. The weakening of eros is part of a more general weakening of inner passions. We need to be aware of this and consider it as a possible new human impoverishment. We know very concretely that for the first time, the younger generation run the risk of being poorer than their parents. Similarly, we should reflect on the fact that those who are young today run the risk of being poor in passions, poor in inner images than in the 20th century. 
The difference, of course, is that in order to produce more material wealth, one would have to invest a great deal. On the other hand, feeding and growing passions is always possible for everyone. And most importantly, it has no financial cost. It depends on individual choices that we and our children can still make. Rather than selling our souls to external images, we now more than ever need to cultivate the personal imagination, which makes each of us a unique individual. And for this reason, special. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.